Hallelujah, Bazaran. Um, Sabo Tulan Gakulu for the word uh, of intercession. So, my name is Namtanda Zamasango. I am your MC for today. Yes. Um, so, uh, okay. There are a few verses that I want to read, but before I read them, I would like us to have one song from the worship team and then I will come back. Thank you.
Yabonga Kul Ovezan. So, like I introduced earlier, my name is Namtana Zumasango. Um, I would like to greet Abazala Nibonke. Uh, I would like to greet Umfundi Si Gabonu Kutukon on the chat, also my participants and everyone else. And happy women's month is yes. so before I would like to read um first John to welcome you all. Um first John chapter two, verse 15 to 17. Utim, do not love this world, nor the things of the of it. Oh, NLT version. vision, uh, nor the things it offers. For when you love the world, you do not have the love for the Father in you. For the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but are from this world. And this world is fading away along with everything that people crave. But anyone who does what pleases God will live forever. And also, um, yes, I would also like to read uh, Second uh, Timothy chapter two. Um, yes, I will only read um, from. Okay, let's start with Luke verse one. Uti, I urge you first of all to pray for all people. Ask God to help them intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can have, um, we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God, our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth. For there is only one God and one mediator who can reconcile God and humanity, the man Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, with this uh, few verses, I would like to welcome you all, Bazalani, on our Friday service. Yes. Um, so according to my time, it's um, 21 past six. So we'll go to a praise and worship. Thank you.
Um, I'm not sure if you can get a bono from Ilo. Um, yeah, but before we go to Ilo, I item from the worship team. I just want to say, good team. Um, we, we as Abazor and I remember go a dinner as much from E E woman which we had a, a discussion good team. We need to. Uh, it was adapting a sister, so you need a sister to lean on as a as a learner. So it's like a brother's keeper. Um, so I was thinking, Joguti, a lot has happened from first semester or from last year with the COVID. Others lost their parents, lost friends. Um, 
by going in the again. So I have this word from all Revelations chapter one, sorry, from chapter 21, verse four, it would seem he will wipe every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. It's just, we would see whatever you are going through, but there is a time that will come where they will not be pain or dead or sorrow. Song is the best job And with everything happening, you need to actually um, speak to a sister or a brother, Longa Kulmana. We know we'll see, probably we don't have our contact services right now because of COVID. But that does not mean Uti, you can't call your sister or you can't call your brother um, to say Uti, you are going through certain um, things and you need help because and end up in depression or like yabo. So you need someone to talk to if that thing happens. No matter even if academics, you need a sister to help, you need a brother to help, you should be actually free to call my neighbors alone because at the end of days, we are brothers keepers, we are sisters, you, you, you keep your sisters keep. So yeah, um, that was just, yes, from me. So next is our item from the worship team. Thank you. Just we God. 
Um, that was a very beautiful example. So I will introduce our speaker um, and we'll go straight to the word. So our speaker is Pastor Ari Setuaba, who is a born child of God, who is married. Um, they have two kids. He is a theologian at heart and holds a theology degree. He is passionate about uh, Bible expository. He fellowships at the WC uh, under the leadership of Umfundis um, Masing, uh, Pastor A and Dr. P. Masing. So may we all welcome him It he takes the stand. Amen. Greetings to one and all in the name of Jesus. Um, my name is Rego Situava. I am born again and I love the Lord. We want to take this time to thank God for the opportunity that he has given us to fellowship and be in his presence. We sure don't take it light in any way. And uh, we really feel honored to be a part of the service today. I promise not to take long. I will be very considerate of your, of your, your data. My Bible is turned to the book of Ruth chapter number one. As we read only one verse, which is verse 16. Um, Allow me to also take this time and uh, extend my well wishes for, or, or rather towards women in this Women's Month. We, we pray and wish them all of God's best. May God preserve them and keep them in this very month and beyond. Yes. Um, my Bible is sent to the book of Ruth, chapter number one. We are reading only one verse, which is verse number 16. It's a common, it's a common scripture or verse. Um, but I believe the Lord has something to say through the scripture. And it reads as follows. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And your God will be my God. I, 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 I want us to underline a few things um, with regards to what Ruth is saying here. She refuses to go back home. She refuses to leave Naomi. And then she says to Naomi, wherever you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. And lastly, your God will be my God. Let us pray. Father, bless the reading of your word and your speaking thereafter. In this fellowship, in this time, we are waiting to hear from you, O oh God. Because we fully understand that one word from you is more than enough, O oh God, to change the directions of our lives. One word from you, O oh God, is more than enough to bring about the needed shift from one level of glory to the other. 
from one dimension to the next. We therefore humbly ask, oh God, that you speak to us as we, your people, listen. In Jesus' mighty name, this we pray. Amen. Yeah, being this, this season that we are in is psyching us up. We are used to hearing people saying amen, but now all of a sudden we need to read on the chat. We've read from the book of Ruth. It is one of two books in the Bible that carries a name of a woman. Um, it is quite interesting just to note that on its own to say Ruth is one of two. The other one is Esther. And other than that, all other books in the Bible do not carry a name that belongs to a woman. The book of Ruth is written during a time where judges ruled. That is why when you check the sequence of your Bible, you will find that the book of Ruth comes immediately after judges because some people are describing it to form part of the book of judges because it was written during that time. Now, it is important for us to understand that because it was written in that time where judges ruled, why was it written and what's the significance thereof? When you go through the whole book of Ruth, it's, it's a story, it's a beautiful love story, which depicts the picture of redemption. We, 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 see, we see God redeeming his people, or rather using Ruth as a picture of the church that is to be redeemed and that is being redeemed. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with your Bible, I will quickly narrate the story. The Bible tells us that there was a man called Elimelech who had a wife called Naomi. Now, Naomi and Elimelech, they had two sons. And these two sons grew up. And as they grew up, the Bible says, the Bible says, in Bethlehem, now, if you note, you will, you will understand that Bethlehem is the place of the bread, the place of food. Now, it so happens that where, when there was no food in Bethlehem, the Bible says that the family moved from Bethlehem and they went to Moab. We will talk about Moab just now. But when they moved to Moab, what happened was that the two sons, they found wives. So that's how Ruth and the other sister came into being part of this family. The other sister, her name was Orpa. Now the Bible says times got difficult. And as they got, became difficult, the Bible says Elimelech passed on. He died. The two sons also died. Now, Naomi wants to go back to Bethlehem. At this point, Bethlehem had found a way of having food again. So now the journey needs to begin so that they go back to Bethlehem. Now, they, they take a journey, the three women take a journey. And along the journey, Naomi says to her daughters-in-law, and she says to them, I release you. Go back to your nation, go back to your homes, because I do not have any other sons that could possibly come to marry you. And the Bible says Orpa decided to go back and Naomi, Naomi 
was left with Ruth. Now Ruth then says to Naomi, permit me not to go back. Do, do not allow me to go back from where I come from. That's the, the sermon right there. Because sometimes our future may look so bleak that the only other option we look that the only other option that we see is to go back from where we come from. But Ruth is teaching us something here to say, even though I know where I come from, I'd rather choose to go forward than to go backward. Now, now Ruth did not want to go back to the nation of Moab because of the following reasons. When you trace the history and the formation of the nation of Moab, you will realize in Genesis chapter number 19, the Bible tells us that Lot had two daughters. I'm building my case, please be patient with me. Lot had two daughters and the one night, the two daughters said, let us give our father alcohol, let us get him drunk, so that he sleeps with us, so that we may keep the heritage of our family. Our family could grow because at that point they did not have husbands. So the only other option that they had or what they found to be a viable way to go about with it was to sleep with their father. Now the older daughter, the Bible tells us that the older daughter slept with the father first. And from that act, the daughter was pregnant and gave birth to a son called Moab. Lord help me. Now, when Moab was born, given the conditions under which he was born, he grows up, and life continues as if nothing wrong happened. The other sister gives birth to a son as well. Now, these two sons, they grow and become nations. And ultimately, we have the nations of the Moabites and the Ammonites. For those of you who are not quite, you don't frequent your Bible, you will remember that there were two nations, two dominant nations that attacked the prophet Jehoshaphat. It was the nation of Moab and the nation of the Ammonites. Now you understand where they come from. Hmm. Now, Ruth now does not want to go back to Moab because of how the nation came about. That's number one. Number two, the nation of Moab had idol gods. They had the god of fertility. They had the god of love. Life. I would believe that they had a god of academics as well. that ruled it. Now, whenever these gods were angry, whenever the people of Moab did not do justice in offering whatever sacrifices to please these gods, these gods were the ones that turned on their people to kill them. Ah. So whenever sacrifices are made, they had to make so much of a sacrifice that they had to please their gods. 
because in the absence of their gods being pleased, they stood a chance of being killed by their very own gods. Now, Ruth is married and now is introduced to the true living God. Now, having experienced life with this God, she then says to Naomi, I cannot go back to these gods who kill us every now and then when they are not satisfied. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I cannot go back to a situation whereby people are killed every now and then simply because God, their gods are not happy with them. So, so because now Ruth has encountered the God, the, the only true God, she then says, she says to Naomi, wherever you go, ah, I will go. Th th this tells me that Ruth believed that Naomi could hear from God. Because the Bible says, for the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. Hmm. What does this tell me? It tells me that there are moments where our God is on the move. Ooh, ooh. This, this, this tells me that there are times when we need to move with God. Just like the Israelites in the Old Testament, the Bible says that by day, they would walk with God to the extent that God would be their pillar of cloud. By night, he would be a pillar of fire. But in this time, we need to understand that we need to move when God moves. We, we, we need to move with God when he moves. Because at the risk of not moving with our God, we stand the risk of being exposed and not being covered. So, so when Ruth says to Naomi, where you go, I will go. She has the assurance that Ruth, or rather that Naomi hears from God. And every step that Naomi takes, it is a step that is being ordered by God himself. So, so, so Ruth, Ruth then says, where you go, I will go. And, and where you stay, I will stay. It is interesting to note that God is not always on the move. There are times when he settles. Ah. That is why in the, in when, when, when you read the history of the Israelites, you would find out that whenever the cloud would move, they would move with it. But whenever the cloud would stop, they would stop as well and they would pitch their tents. And they knew that in them pitching their tents, it was not a permanent thing. For at any given time, the cloud could move. So, so what does this tell us? What does this tell us? This simply tells us that we need to understand the movement of God. We need to understand that there are times where God dwells. <laughs> that is why, that is why the Bible then tells us he dwells on, in the praises of his people. That's where God dwells. That, that God, that, that God's location. If you want to find out where God is, worship and that is where he will be. But, 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 but I'm quickly rushing to this point that says, where you go, I will go. 
Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people. This is under the notion that says, I'm not prepared to go back to the Moabites because I've seen how they live. Now, she then says something that's powerful and I believe God wants us to, to grasp in this time. And Ruth then says, your God, your God will be my God. If, if, if ever, if ever you, you, you got to a place where you doubted anything, believe this, that Naomi lived a life that was able to teach Ruth about God. Yeah. For, 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 for some people, they only know God as the God of their parents. The, for, for some people, they only know God as a God they as as a God they encounter when they walk into a church building. For, for, for some students, I've been there, I know this. For some students, they only know God during exam times. But there's a God who will be your God even outside of these borders. He, he will be your God when. When, when, when people are quiet and he'll be the one that speaks to you. He, he will be your God. He will, he will be your God. He will, he will be your God and he will be able to do what only God can do. Let's, let's, let's look at a brief journey of this God. Who is this God? This is the very same God who said in the beginning, let there be and there was. Who is this God? He, he is the same God. He's the same God who said to Abraham, let's go, let's go. I need you to offer your son. And he went up a mountain and Abraham says to the servants, stop here, let me take my son. We are going to worship and we will be back. And, and, and on the mountain, there was provision. And that, that's, the, that's the God, that's the God I'm preaching on. That's the God who will keep you even when you are so far away from home. This is because I'm preaching to students here. When, 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 when everything else does not make sense, hold on to this God. Let this God be your God. I, 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 I once said to someone, and I said to them, you see, you see, for, for some of us who grew up in church, it had always been the God of our parents, the God they prayed to. But every now and then, God allows us to get into situations where we do not step in by our parents' faith but rather we need to stand on our own faith and declare him to be our God. For the Bible then tells us, if God be for us, who can be against us? Let him, let him be your God. You've come too far, you've experienced far too much to still refer to him as the God of Osbaniban and Osbaniban. I, 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 had, I had a conversation some couple of years ago with my wife and I said to her, and I said to her, a time has come where we as Christians need to adopt a language that says, yes, we have heard of the God of Moses. Yes, we have heard of the God of Abraham. Yes, we have heard of the God who did miracles in the Bible, but there needs to come a time where we declare him to say he is now our God. When, when people are looking for a testament, let them look at your life and say, the God of Mandisa works. The, the, the God of Tepo works. I believe in the God 
of Tatana Makubel. I believe, let, let, them, let them look at your life and see God at work. Now, now my question to you is, as we close, my question to you is this. In the time that you have been on this journey with God, how have you represented him to those who don't know you, who don't know him? Because it is easy for us to gather like this on a Friday. And tomorrow, as it is Saturday, we do the exact opposite of what represents and reflects God. How have you represented him? As I close, as I close, Naomi says, or rather Ruth says, Ruth, Ruth says to Naomi, your God will be my God. I, 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 there's this impression in my spirit that says there are people who need to make this declaration tonight to say he's no longer another person's God. He's my God. He's, he's my God. This is the same God who gives us a promise in Isaiah. And he says, Unto your old age, I will carry you. Who shall you compare me to? Yes, yes, Londega, he is, he is your God. He is, he is your God. And someone might be saying, but I've got a situation that, that, that is frustrating me. I'm, I'm simply saying to you, call him your God. In the midst of that situation, call him your God. And, 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 and the situation will listen to him. Uh, I remember the scriptures tell us, the disciples asked this question to say, what manner of man is this? That even the winds and the seas listen to him. That, that's my God. That's my God. Let me, let, me, let me share this with you. Let me share this with you. This is the same God who got into the fire when the three Hebrew boys were being thrown into the fire. The fire consumed the soldiers that threw the boys into the fire, but did not consume the ones that were targets for this fire. That's, that's my God, that's my God. This is the same God who got into the pit and the den of the lions and made sure that he closes the mouths of the lions so that, so that when Daniel was thrown into the pit, into the den of lions, they did not consume him. That is my God. That is my God. That is my God. That is my God. That is, that is my God. If Ruth, I'm closing. If Ruth could say this, hmm, and when you check the genealogy of Jesus, you will get to find out that Ruth is one of four women mentioned in the bloodline of Jesus. Ah, thank you. This is the same woman. Ruth is the great grandmother to David. You will do the math. Now then Jesus is hanging on the cross. <laughs> Jesus is hanging on the cross. And Naya being man calls God my God. He then says, my God, my God. Now, every so often we need to make this declaration that he is my God. Every so often, we need to make this declaration, he is my God. Whew. I've walked a journey with my God and I know he's able. And even if he doesn't save me, it shall be known. It shall be known. 
I don't know about your journey, but I, I understand, I understand that, 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 that he can also be your God tonight. He can also be your God tonight. Yande Labo Shakahaya. He is my God. He is my God. He is my God. Even though he was wounded, he was wounded for my healing. He's still my God. He was pierced in the sides and there came out blood and water, but he's still my God. My God, my God. I don't know what you're facing, but I, I'm just, I have just come to declare this. He can also be your God. He can also be your God. He can also be your God. Those migraines know his name. I don't know who I'm talking to, but those migraines that are bothering you, they know his name. They know his name. If the seas and oceans could listen to him, if the stars listen to him, if the moon listen to him, and if the sun listens to him, what was or what is your situation before him? He is your God. He is your God. He is your God. He is your God. God is at work even in this time. He is your God. He is your God. Even when situations are tough, he will still remain to be your God. Even, even when the odds are against you, he will remain to be your God. I, I don't know, I don't know who said what, but God will forever be there for you. He will be your God. Let's close our eyes and pray. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We bless you and we honor you. For the sole knowledge that says that you are our God. When we go through the valleys of life, you are our God. You've assured us we would not drown. When we go through the fires of life, they will not consume us for you are our God. This is the declaration we are making, O King of Glory. That after all has been said and done, we declare you to be our God. It shall be known in this generation that there's a, a, a group of people that have been risen and raised by God to declare that he is our God, for he can do anything at any time. He will provide, he will heal, he will restore, he will redeem, for he is our God. We thank you for the healing, oh God, that is taking place. We thank you, Heavenly Father God, for the hope that has been restored in someone's life, knowing that you are their God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, and we bless you. We give you the glory, honor, and adoration. In Jesus' mighty and blessed name, this we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, and God bless you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, I don't want to comment or add anything, just want to say thank you. And I also want to make a declaration and say, he is my God. Amen. So uh, thank you so much, Bazarane, for, oh, thank you even from the executive committee for allowing me to be the MC for today. I thank you. And I know I'm a good MC. Thank you. Yeah, so we'll move on to our announcements by our sister Uzanele Zwane. Amen. Thank you so much. And perfect.
Amen. Thank you, MC. May I please confirm that everyone can hear me? Yes, as we can. Thank you. Um, Mami Bazalani, I have nothing to add. Gambela, Onenlebe, Uzwile, the Lord has spoken so powerfully among us, and we are grateful to Pastor Sedwaba for allowing the Lord to speak his word to us in such a manner. We acknowledge the fact that when the service started, we are, you were already here. I mean, we, we really appreciate that your time on, like, it's just um, something to be grateful for. We truly are, and we are encouraged, Nazi as a fellowship, to please just keep time and be punctual. I, I mean, we've learned from our elders. And... Um, I would like to acknowledge any visitors that we have um, who may have come with the pastor or from other campuses and our alumni. We are truly grateful for your presence. Um, I would like to acknowledge the executive committee and the different subcommittee members who have been so active and allowing the Lord to use them for us to be gathered successfully and worship and fellowship together. We are truly grateful, Wazalan. And to you all, Wazalani, you could have been doing anything else right now. You could have been anywhere else. It's a Friday night. It's cold. You could have been sleeping, but you are here. So we really honor God for that. Uh, may he richly bless you. So um, for the announcements, uh, we have Bible study on Monday, uh, we have Bible studies every Monday. So Bazalani, you are encouraged to please um, attend Good Bible Study. We learn a lot, a lot. And yeah, just come, just come. You won't regret it, I promise. And on Tuesdays and Wednesday, and Wednesdays, we have a woman of virtue and a woman of impact. So we're having a woman of impact on Tuesdays, every Tuesday, and every Wednesday, we're having a woman of virtue. We are also encouraged to learn it to just gather, you know, and worship the Lord. You know, it's different to gather the woman of virtue than in a Friday service like this, because then it's just us as women. Women of impact with Angel, so you can literally talk about anything, discuss, like grow together in the Lord. So, you are very encouraged to please attend. And then on Thursdays, Vazalane, we will be having our devotionals posted on our WhatsApp group. Just take a minute or two to just read and be encouraged in the Lord. And you're also welcome to share any word that the Lord has placed in your heart as well. And then on Friday, um, every Friday we have our Friday services like this one. Um, please do attend and invite other people. Uh, you're welcome to share the link and the poster on your social media platforms because while wow, the Lord really moves, the Lord really speaks um, on such services. And yeah, we don't want to keep that to ourselves now, do we? So yeah, that is all for our announcements. May we please uh, close our eyes in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Lord, you are good, you are great, your mercy is forever and sure. Thank you, Father, for your word. Indeed, you are our God. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray, O oh God, that this word has fallen into fatal ground and you will nurture it, O oh God, that it produces fruit in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Father, thank you, Ulungulu Tungwele, that you will sustain us, that we do not turn back to our old ways. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray, O oh God, that you restore uh, the joy of our salvation in the name of Jesus. Indeed, Lord, we have tasted your goodness and we don't want to move, oh God. We just want to stay and bask in your presence in Jesus Christ. My name, Father, we pray that you be the light at our feet and that you guide our steps in Jesus Christ. My name, oh Father, we pray and we surrender all our ways to you in Jesus Christ. My name, we pray, oh God, that you give us the wisdom of discernment to discern what you are doing, how you are moving amongst us in Jesus Christ. My name. Oh God, that when you move, we move along with you. And when you stay, we stay along with you. Help us, Lord, to acknowledge you in all our ways, for we do not want to do anything without you. 
guidance without your presence in Jesus Christ. My name, Father, you are good and your mercy is forever and joy. Won't you just be our God? Remind us of who we are in you. Remind us, oh God, that we find our identity in you, in Jesus Christ. My name, help us, oh God, to represent you in everything that you do. For your word says, be holy, for I am holy. Lord, where can we go from your spirit? Your word says, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I ascend to the heavens, oh God, there you are. In Jesus Christ, my name, oh God. Thank you, sweet spirit of the living God, that you have allowed us such an opportunity to be gathered, oh God, as your children. Have your way as we depart. Thank you for just leading us through this service until now. As we depart, oh God, in each and everyone's room, your presence will be there, helping us through our academics, giving us strength and wisdom that comes from you, oh God. In Jesus Christ, my name, we surrender our all to you, Father. We pray for the leadership of this. Um, Fellowship, oh God, that you help them, oh God, not tie to be used by you as vessels to spread your word in Jesus Christ's my name. We pray also, God, for the leadership of every club in society, oh God, that you use them for the benefit of your children in Jesus Christ's my name. Oh God, we surrender our health to you, our physical health, our mental health, all that will aid us into fulfilling your will and your purpose for our lives, we yield to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, O oh Father. Your love, we shall see your goodness in our lives. We will witness in, even in our families, O oh God, among our peers, O oh God, we will represent you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for choosing us. Thank you for the joy of our salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, pour your Holy Spirit and let it radiate to all aspects of our lives, O oh Father. In your house, we will dwell all the days of our life. Thank you, God, that you are richly blessing each and every one of us that are gathered here in Jesus' name and all those who, have, who might have wished to be here but couldn't. Thank you, sweet spirit of the living God, that you hear our prayers, oh God, and you answer them before we even finish praying. By your name, everything is possible. In Jesus' name, thank you, God. Amen. May we please share the grace, Bazalan. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We will dwell in the house of the Lord now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Madeline, for attending. God bless you. Good night. Amen.